Okay, let me sh uh, start if there is no question. Let me share my screen. Okay, this is what we discussed and spoke about yesterday about the warehouse structure. Warehouse number, then we created new storage type, new storage sections, new storage bins and new activity area. We did this setup yesterday. Okay, then Yeah, we also created a bin sorting sequence, bin sequencing based on the sort sequence assigned to activity area and specific activities for a storage type. Work centers and all that we will create later on based on our different topics as we progress further. So there is no question, then let me start with the main topic which is inbound process in EWM. Let me start in presentation. Okay. <clears throat> so what happens in, in the real world is within the organization there is a dedicated team which is purchasing department or a purchasing team, they do create purchase orders, right? And based on what they do create purchase orders, I hope you guys are already aware that there will be material requirements, whether that will be manually coming from different people from different department of the companies or organizations, or that requirement might come from the material requirement planning run, MRP run. So it will create planned orders and those planned orders will be converted into purchase requisition if those materials are externally procured. If those materials are in-house produced, then system will create production order for those materials. So <coughs> requirement comes based on requirement, some certain documents like purchase requisition are created passed on to the purchasing department. The purchasing department then will look out for sources, sources of supply, possible outline agreements available, existing or not, in for record, source list, etc. And then after a request for quotation process and all that depends on what is available for that material, whether it's first time procuring material or it's existing material. So they will look for some records to source that material. And then they will create a purchase order for a certain vendor. This purchase order will be communicated to suppliers or the vendor, right? Through EDI or a soft copy, hard copy, whatever is the way of communication with the vendor, they will send a copy of this purchase order to the vendor. Then what happens is vendor sends, us, sends ASN advance shipping notification back to our organization, to our company or to the organization of this purchasing department. So if they are connected through EDI with their system and ERP system of this organization or let's say we are the purchasing department or we are talking about our company, okay? Then vendor will send ASN to us means to our ERP system. Once this ASN comes to our ERP system, it will automatically create an inbound delivery based on this advanced shipping notification. And once this inbound delivery is created, this inbound delivery will be replicated to EWM system and then further uh, the scenario in EWM how it will be executed that we will see and we will learn in today's exercise or in today's topic. But you need to understand that, okay, first there is a purchase order created. You being functional guy, you should also know that based on what purchase order is created, why purchase orders are created. We are not going to discuss that in detail because that's part of material management and uh, inventory management and procurement. So our focus is here from the delivery to EWM. 
So how delivery comes? A purchase order, ASN, inbound delivery, and then it goes to EWM. So now when we are learning and going through this training that time, we do not have a real-time vendor and their system connected with our EWM as for HANA system. So what we will do is, we will create a purchase order and we will create a inbound delivery directly with reference to the purchase order. We will not create a advanced shipping notification in our system. Okay, but just to get you the clarity that there is something called ASN involved in the inbound process. So purchase order, inbound delivery, and then this inbound delivery goes to EWM. So now there are two things. Again, this will always come back to us again and again. If you are working with embedded EWM system, this EWM not inbound delivery notification will not be created because you are embedded within everything. You have S4 HANA system and EWM system. So what will be the document sequence? Purchase order, inbound delivery, and inbound delivery in EWM. Three documents will be created. If you are working with a decentralized EWM on S4 HANA or traditional connected with your S4 HANA system, then you will have purchase order, inbound delivery, inbound delivery notification, and inbound delivery. Any doubt on this? Any question? When you are working with S4 HANA embedded EWM, this first document in green box in EWM will not be created. It is not required. So you will have purchase order in S4 HANA, inbound delivery in S4 HANA logistic, purchase order in S4 HANA procurement, inbound delivery in S4 HANA logistics, and inbound delivery with reference to this logistic delivery created in EWM. So these three documents will be there as part of inbound process. Then this delivery in EWM is used for your further processing and execution in EWM system to po post goods received, to create warehouse task, loading, unloading, and then uh, put away warehouse task creation, confirmation, packing. Everything is executed based on this delivery in EWM. I think somebody was trying to say something. Yeah, uh, it's Ramesh here. Yes, uh, sir. What was the what was the technical requirement that it has to create a one uh, copy of this uh, document? So, sorry, in, I'm saying in, in in decentralized. So, what is yes. the technical requirement? Why does it has to system have to have a copy of this uh, inbound delivery? Why can't it directly create an inbound delivery yes. in system? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See the the reason behind that or the technical reason behind that is that when you are working with embedded EWM system that time everything is within same system so in that case it is just a duplicate document or one additional document in this process when you are working with embedded system because this inbound delivery notification in EWM system is a replica or is just a copy of inbound delivery of your ECC or S4 HANA. It is just a replica. So, then I'm coming to uh, that point also later on. Again, I will come. But first now I will tell you, when you are working with a decentralized system, this inbound delivery has to go to EWM decentralized system as a replica or as a copy of this because in decentralized system, first this notification will be created and then from notification, this inbound delivery is created automatically or manually activated. So when this is in between this ID and to ID is created or activated that time, EWM specific parameters are determined, which are specific to EWM. When it is getting created from here to here replication, that is having same details, nothing specific to EWM execution. So first, a copy of that, it says that, okay, there is one delivery in ERP or S4 HANA created, and this is the copy of that delivery. Now you start acting according to this copy and determine EWM specific parameters here in your delivery. So 
that's why in decentralized this notification is required to determine the EWM specific parameters where in embedded system all these things are together in the same system so that system already know when this delivery is getting created it is meant to go to EWM system so directly from logistic delivery to EWM inbound delivery is created and system right away determine EWM specific parameters here which does not happen in decentralized okay yeah yeah okay and then the the the, the region you you might be clear with what what i'm trying to explain but you will see when you are working on a project okay you will see the difference when you are working with centralized and decentralized especially when there are when you are working with decentralized and when there are enhancements that you are going to set up or design for your deliveries for example you want to have a customized logic to determine a warehouse process type based on some customized parameters which are not standard so standard automatically system determines a warehouse process type but you want to add some other filters other parameters other field values to determine your warehouse process type so that means there will be a map in body which will be used and in that body <coughs> you will have those uh, determination logic uh, placed in so that means when it is creating from id n to id that time it is determining the wpt so that logic will be here in between okay now <coughs> yeah okay yeah so this inbound delivery in ewm will be used to post goods received when we post goods received it sends a communication message back to erp system or s for hana delivery it will update the goods received information in our delivery and it will create material document and accounting document for our goods received posting with reference to inbound delivery so it will update this stock it will create a material and accounting document movement type 101 and whatever is required okay so then the message is sent again once we confirm the put away once we confirm the put away into the final bin that time again it sends a message to s4 hana system logistic component of s4 hana and then again it look for the update if for example the way we are testing and we are setting up that we will have two storage locations rod and afs received on dock and available for sale so first when we post goods received it is received in rod location in s4 hana and once we do put away it is changed from f1 stock type to f2 which causes a posting change in ewm and communicate back to s4 hana which creates a stock transfer from location to location from rod location to afs location so those updates are coming from ewm to s4 hana logistic component at different times one is at the time of gr posting other is at the time of final put away confirmation clear let me know if you have any doubt about any specific activity in between in this process so right now the way you are looking at this picture just ignore this part i can hide it but i want you to look at this picture so that you understand in case of decentralized this is there in case of embedded this is not there okay so you need to have because depends on client to client some people will go with embedded ewm some uh, companies will go with decentralized ewm so this document is in place is not creating or not making any changes for you in your learning or in the process point of view it is just one additional document in this process and you are not doing anything on this document actually not really nobody does anything on this document if there is any development if there is something that is always here on this document 
but yeah it is uh, sap design it is required when it comes to decentralize a copy of this delivery from one system to other system required as a notification and then it proceed further So the numbers of inbound delivery are different or same in both system? Yes. So it till before 1909, the number of deliveries were different. Okay. Now, because you also need to understand good question and you also need to understand the, the background or the older way of how it was working and how it is working for that. If you follow what is new in each version of EWM, you will get clarity and always try to spend like 30 minutes in every two weeks or one month that what's new in SAP EWM. So then you will get clarity. So I'll tell you before 1909 or 1809, but before 1909, I'm sure this inbound delivery replicating to EWM this was always same number this if this notification is there it will always have same number as this inbound delivery okay whether you are working with centralized decentralized traditional EW, whatever is the ewm and ecc or s4 hana you are working if you have inbound delivery notification as a document in your process in your system it will always have same number as your inbound delivery in logistic first thing second is in older version of EWM before 1909, this inbound delivery in EWM, which is second document, used to have a different number than inbound delivery in ECC or logistics. Okay, it used to have a different number. But now, because of the, the simplifications and because of the uh, the SAP uh, future roadmap and all that they are trying to simplify everything when especially when it comes to S4 HANA so they are trying to simplify so one of the simplification or what's new re also is there that same logistic delivery number is also in EWM same inbound delivery will be or can be it can be different also but in 90% of the cases it will always be the same delivery number to avoid the confusion Earlier, people were confused about which delivery, what is my delivery, what number, this, that, and all that. But now, every delivery number will be same. Inbound delivery, notification, and inbound delivery in EWM, all of these will be same number. Okay? In reality, I'm telling, in our system, it might not be same. Okay? Depends how system is set up. Clear, Sri? Yes, thank you. Yeah, okay. So this is again same process. Uh, user or the purchasing department create the purchase order. Purchase order is communicated to the supplier, then supplier sends the ASN. ASN system creates inbound delivery with reference to ASN. This delivery is distributed to EWM system creates inbound delivery notification. If you are in decentralized, And if you are not in decentralized, then it will create directly inbound delivery if you are working with embedded EWM. Then this inbound delivery, the supplier delivers the product and user unload the handling units from the vehicle. Then post goods received or post goods received unloading and posting goods received uh, can happen same time. And then system update the goods received information to create material and accounting document in S4 HANA or ECC system. And then simultaneously or side by side here, the warehouse people, they will create put away warehouse task and confirm the put away into the bin. Any question about any of these steps? This is same what we're talking about, nothing new here. 
yeah so one thing you need to know here is that yeah so the activation or creation from id and to id come on this is one second let me stop sharing and share again because i want to use that pointer yeah it's better okay when inbound delivery in ewm is created from idn okay that is automatically activated from idn to id with the help of post processing framework ppf okay what is ppf in ewm in simple words just to start with that it is a <coughs> replacement for our message output determination in ecc or as for hana okay in ewm there is something called ppf which is used for message output determination and printing the documents plus it is also used to automate certain activities in ewm okay we will have a detailed dedicated <coughs> chapter about ppf later on but right now just to get you clarity that yes from idn to id it is with the help of ppf then when idn to id is getting created system determined ewm specific settings for example a warehouse process type a warehouse process type is determined and then the warehouse tasks are generated for the inbound delivery document and then the further activities are executed in the warehouse egr is a separate process we will discuss later i don't want to get into that while we are focusing on inbound let's focus on simple inbound process itself okay <clears throat> now first let me show you the system okay so you remember yesterday we created a delivery is asp1 hey come on where is asp1 am i logged in into 800 client yeah 800 i need to log off login into 400 client okay you're saying the ppt okay okay i'm sorry stop sharing and share the screen then it will share everything so as part of inbound delivery topic we have something called warehouse process type okay so i was going to explain about it but before i go explain about warehouse process type i want to show you how and where it is coming into the picture okay so this is one inbound delivery we created yesterday okay for this inbound delivery at line item level so the inbound delivery in ewm also have same structure this is header level this is item overview and the third one below is the item detail about a certain specific item which we select here one by one here we might have five ten line items within one delivery so one by one item details we can see here in the third area of the delivery document structure so if i expand and then one more thing here you see this is the list view and now i am switching to the form view so form view switch view or list view and form view there are two settings by this button so when i select it and click on form view then it will show me the full details of all of these fields here 
so I will close this header level form view I'll put it in list view and item level I will switch to form view and I will scroll down and I will see a warehouse process type is getting determined okay this warehouse process type is getting determined in EWM because everything is based on this warehouse process type in EWM all execution happens based on this warehouse process type lot of things are determined based on this okay so we need to understand how warehouse process type is created how warehouse process type is determined and what does it controls okay that is part of one topic or that is part of the inbound process and it is very important for us to understand how a new warehouse process type is created defined and determined and what is the use of warehouse process type okay so now let me explain the theoretical part first then we will come to the practical configurations and setup it's like same like you guys are aware about movement type the movement type is in ECC or S4 HANA in EWM there is no such thing as called movement type in EWM there is something called warehouse process type in simple words or in layman's language you can understand or uh, think that movement type is replaced by warehouse process type okay but movement type in S4 HANA or EWM also has some control parameters related to accounting related to posting but warehouse process type does not have that connection or that kind of parameters inside warehouse process type because it is all about goods movement and materials not anything related to accounting or finance so the warehouse process type controls the physical movement and posting in the warehouse okay it controls the movement inside the warehouse and system process each warehouse processes system processes each warehouse process what are the warehouse processes example such as goods receipt goods issue posting change repacking loading unloading all of these are warehouse processes these all are based on a warehouse process type okay so that means system process or execute each warehouse process like goods receipt goods issue posting change repacking etc using a warehouse process type a warehouse process type is assigned to every warehouse task document there will never be a warehouse task created be without a warehouse process type there will always be a warehouse process type it has to be there if it is not there you cannot create warehouse task you cannot do anything in EWM okay then the warehouse tasks are based on warehouse process type it behaves according to your process type how you configure how you set up the warehouse process type is linked to the activity or movement which is executed in the warehouse activities are like put away picking or internal or posting change and it includes when necessary for simple movements the storage type and section or storage type and bin from where to where the goods have to be moved for complex movements it, it includes the storage process for process oriented storage control the storage process process oriented storage control is a separate and a lengthy topic and very important one which we will discuss later on after two or three more sessions we will move to the process oriented storage control and that's where we will that's why it says complex movements complex movements means you have several steps within the inbound process and manually you are definitely physically you are doing all these steps but are you able to do that or map that in the system for example in in today's world it doesn't matter you are working with WM EWM or non SAP system but physically what happens a truck always comes to the warehouse door 
you always unload the materials whether manually by hands or by forklift you unload the materials or handling units from the truck but in WM or in any other solution you are not able to record that effort that you are putting to unload you are directly posting goods received and creating put away but after unloading you might be counting the boxes and then you are checking the quality or you are performing some additional packing and then doing put away physically you are doing those but are you able to do that in system with the EWM yes you will be able to do that and it will be mapped with the process oriented storage control which we will learn later on okay so it is just saying that this warehouse process type is linked to activity or movement or direction of the goods movement plus it does also control or ma have a field maintained or used for the process oriented storage control and also there is a warehouse order creation rule field so all these are controlled by warehouse process type so from notification to id getting created now one more thing guys this second document or the whatever whether we are working with IDN or without IDN EWM inbound delivery is also having another name in EWM from document point of view and the second name of inbound delivery is the warehouse request okay it is a warehouse request from warehouse point of view to execute further warehouse activities you call it inbound delivery or you call it warehouse request both are same for this inbound delivery or warehouse request a warehouse process type is determined assigned and based on this warehouse process type and line item of the delivery warehouse tasks are created there will always be as many as number of warehouse tasks as many line items are there in your delivery for each line item there will be one warehouse task but it is not necessary that there will be one warehouse order for each warehouse task there is possibility that you can group warehouse tasks together into one warehouse order so here two warehouse task into one warehouse order and one warehouse task into one warehouse order so I'll take a pause before I continue and I'll see if there is any doubt or question from your side Is it clear? Yeah. Uh, warehouse task is created first, or the warehouse order? How, how? First warehouse. In if you're talking about the, the the system sequence and the background, yes, the warehouse tasks are created first. Then warehouse orders are formed based on the warehouse order creation rules, based on certain parameters. How you design means the design and the control is in your hand you as a solution architect or the the functional consultant will design system such a way that according to your control parameters and rules that you define system will group warehouse tasks into warehouse orders but yeah the simple answer to the question is yes first warehouse tasks are created and then these are assigned to the warehouse order whether there is one to one or there is many to one many is warehouse task one is warehouse order okay so warehouse task can be also uh, you can also term it as the uh, transfer yes transfer order. which we no, have done. transfer order warehouse task is your transfer order replacement of transfer order from wm you have transfer okay. order which says which material to be moved from where to where and what is the quantity same information is available here in warehouse task which products to be moved from where to where and what is the quantity what is the batch and all that detail is in available in the warehouse task plus now in addition to that material related information one more information is required and that is by whom who is going to move these materials or these warehouse task that is resource the people working in the warehouse that information is determined maintained managed at the warehouse order level that means if you have 10 warehouse tasks grouped into one warehouse order and assigned to one resource you are assigning one warehouse order to the resource automatically or manually also you can do that in EWM 
That means all these 10 warehouse tasks which are included in this warehouse order are automatically to be confirmed by that resource. So he can confirm one by one warehouse task or he can confirm the warehouse order in one go which will confirm all 10 warehouse tasks automatically once he is physically done that activity. Clear Suresh? Salesh? Sorry Salesh. Uh, yeah, correct. Okay, so warehouse task, if you have worked with WM, is the replacement or a new name of your transfer order. Warehouse order is just a additional document which is more required from the resource management point of view. Resource management, queue management, all those are determined at the warehouse order level. And you have a control mechanism how you want your warehouse orders to be formed. Okay, that we will discuss in our warehouse order creation rule topic. But by then you will already understand it as we move with these exercises and practical scenarios. Okay. So the warehouse process type is assigned to a process category and an activity. So we have a warehouse process type, then it has a connection with the process category and activity and direction of which decide or determine the direction of the goods movement whether it is for put away or it is for picking or it is for internal so all this is controlled by the category and activity and then if it is for put away you can also have a possibility to maintain a source bin if it is for picking you have a possibility to maintain destination bin Uh, I know, I just want to inbound delivery. Inbound delivery. How does this uh, process type is picked? <laughs> yes. Yes, Ramesh. Just, yeah, yeah. Ju just give me two, uh, two, three more minutes. We are just heading to that question. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I will explain that. <clears throat> Your question is how it is picked or de de determined, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'll explain that. Okay, so first now currently we are talking about what does it have, what does a warehouse process type have or what it is made of. Okay, it is made of these fields, these parameters. Now I will show you all these things in the system. Okay, can you see my screen, uh, SAP screen? Yeah, we are able to see. Okay, so here its system is determining this warehouse process type 1010. I will show you how it is determined in another 2-3 minutes. But before that, now again let me show you these fields inside the warehouse process type. What does it controls? Uh, for this you have to go to SPRO. In SPRO you go to EWM. Within EWM you have to go to cross process setting. Within cross process setting you have to go to warehouse task and here you have fourth node define warehouse process type. Go there, find your warehouse number and warehouse process type let's say 1010. Now I will double click on this. It will open the details of this warehouse process type 1010. So this is the warehouse process category 1. 1 is for put away, 2 is for stock removal, 3 is for internal, 7 is for posting chain. These are the different categories which are standard categories, okay, available provided by SAP that you can use to create your warehouse process types. So for inbound, for put away, it is one category. Activity, put away. There are different activities that a warehouse process type can be used. Just one second. So internal inventory, internal picking, put away, replenishment, posting change. So these are different activities which can be used to create a specific warehouse process type. Yes, somebody had a question. Uh, uh, this uh, stock removal is the uh, uh, 
uh, pick up uh, the outgoing uh, pick. process yes. right for stock removal yeah. the activity will be pick if your process category is 2 then your activity will be here p i c k so this is how the combination is set up and allowed. You cannot maintain here category 2 and uh, uh, activity put away. You have to active category 1 activity put away, category 2 activity pick. Those are already set up at some other place where it says this is not allowed, this is allowed. Okay. And that is standard control by SAP. Means we do not or should not modify that. Okay. Then there are some other field within this warehouse process type which we will learn and explore as scenario by scenario process by process topic by topic so they were talking about that warehouse order creation rule also is one field available in warehouse process type which can be used if you put a warehouse order creation rule here that means your warehouse orders or your grouping of warehouse task into warehouse order will be based on this certain rule which you assign here means you are hard coding a rule that follow this rule only then it is working according to that rule then other thing they were highlighting that if it is for related to put away you can maintain source storage type and source pin means when you have a certain warehouse process type you can maintain a goods receiving staging area in your warehouse process type itself so that system knows that where you are going to receive the stock okay and then when you post goods received stock is updated in this bin that is one way other way is that system automatically can also determine this goods receiving area when you have several staging areas based on certain master data parameter system will determine okay I'll explain that later but right now initially to start with and keep it simple just imagine or assume that within the warehouse process type you will maintain your GR area then when we move to the process oriented storage control topic we will use this field here storage process where we will assign a process oriented storage control storage process which will have different steps like unloading deconsolidation put away unloading counting deconsolidation put away unloading deconsolidation quality inspection value added services and then put away different steps based on nature of materials which again we will come in detail later on but yes there are different processes which can be designed and assigned to the warehouse process type so these are some of the initial fields that I want to highlight and you should get idea about how warehouse process type is created okay clear yep. okay now quickly let me create one purchase one more new inbound delivery slash nvl 31 n okay what was our purchase order 6269 ASP 4 this a this external ID is ASN number I am giving okay this external ID is the ASN number because I do not have vendor system connected I am just giving this ASN number manually that I am creating this inbound delivery with reference to this ASN which I have received from vendor manually okay I'll change the quantity here let's say 11 and stock placement yeah ASP1 ROD determines this warehouse number and I will save it so this delivery is distributed to EWM 3186 go to PRDI okay so see here the the setting by default is that whatever is the number of your logistic delivery same delivery number is created in EWM also the numbers are same okay 
I was not sure about that. That's why I put that comment that it might not be set up differently. But I think by default, it will remain same now because of these uh, latest changes from SAP. Okay. So the discussion about warehouse process type. See here at item level, system is determining this warehouse process type 1010. Okay. Based on what it is determining, now I'm going to show you that and I'm going to configure a new yes, warehouse. Please let me know. Can you guys put yourself on mute, please? Okay, and then we will configure, set up a new warehouse process type and then we will force system to determine the new one instead of 1010 and that is the purpose of this topic today. Okay. And also one more thing is that uh, the naming convention is very important for, uh, for all of us. So like yesterday I created those storage types 002x, 002y. You try to create something unique. Okay. Think about some unique numbers which you are creating and don't get it messed up with others. Okay, so keep unique numbers. Also, don't try to uh, create something which will confuse me also during the training. So let my re things remain as unique as this I have created. You create your own data, but make sure everything is aligned. For example, my storage type, my indicator, my strategy, search sequence, all these are aligned in the numbering uh, point of your naming convention. Same, I will expect you to do that. You decide, you design your own numbers and you make sure that everything is mapped correctly and it is unique for you. Okay, now I'm going to configuration in SPRO. I will copy this 1010. No, before I copy this, let me show you how it is determined. Determine warehouse process type. This is the determination table where it is getting determined. It is getting determined because of this entry. Okay, it is getting determined because for my warehouse number ASP1, if my document type is INB and all item types are accepted and there is no priority and no process type determination, means only with the help of document type, I am determining warehouse process type 1010. I can use these fields also to be more specific to determine a different warehouse process type. Okay, now I'll come to the delivery. Header level, I have a document type, which is INB. This INB is my document type. If any of the delivery which having this document type determined in the system for my delivery, system automatically will determine warehouse process type 1010. And it is determining because of this entry from configuration from this table. Now what I will do is I will create a new warehouse process type. Okay, always copy records for your warehouse. Make sure your warehouse is entry you are looking at and selecting. ASP1 1010, I'll copy this, okay? And I'll change the number of this warehouse process type, let's say uh, what should I give? What name I should give? Let's say I'll give AS. Okay. AS10. And I'll say put away WPT4 ASP1. Warehouse. Okay. And nothing else. I'm not changing anything. I just created a new WPT. I changed the name of the warehouse process type and description. Rest everything remains same because we are not doing anything else differently. We are just creating new one and determining the new one. So I'll save this. AS10, saved it. Once I have saved it, I'll go back. Now I will create a define control indicator for determining warehouse process type. There is one indicator I can use to determine WPT and this indicator I will assign in my product master. Okay, you will see warehouse is ASP1. 
and my process type determination is let's say a1 okay wpt determination indicator for as10 wpt as10 okay i created a1 i'll save now one more step is left is determine now i have created two different things and now i will put it put all these two things together in determination table okay first let me find my entry which is helping me to this one always copy okay all these things you always copy the most recent record like today what i am creating my wpt currently getting determined as 1010 so i am copying that record from this table and creating a new one tomorrow when i will create do something tomorrow i will select the most recent record that i am creating in this entry which will be as10 okay so i select and copy this asp1 document type inb item type i will still leave it blank and my process type determination indicator i will maintain here now what is my process type determination indicator a1 okay and my warehouse process type is now going to be as10 so this is how i can now force system to determine new wpt i have configured a new one and i can force system to determine the new wpt but before determining that i need to maintain one master data parameter which is for my product ewm91 and mat one transaction this is my material go to change mode go to warehouse data tab in warehouse data tab this process type determination indicator is blank currently because there is no indicator maintained earlier and that's why because of that no indicator was here it was determining 1010 based on this entry there is no indicator but now this entry is more specific okay because i will assign this indicator to my product same material i will use for my delivery that means less field value here is less specific more field values maintained is becoming more specific and it will take preference so that will be determined okay so i will run this exercise once or twice until you get clarity and you will be able to get it understand it very clearly so i assign this indicator here wpt indicator for as10 save it now i will go to create another delivery for my purchase order okay you guys are able to follow me right yes okay let me yeah. know if if i'm going fast i can slow down but i think it's okay once you see it once or twice then you will be able to understand the whole thing so i will run it again and again until you get clarity so now i will select 12 quantity for this okay ignore any yellow messages and save the delivery 3187 and let's go to prdi Thirty-one eighty-seven. Okay, now I hope and pray that it should determine AS one zero instead of one zero one zero. It has to determine. I know it will determine that only. See here now, AS one zero is getting determined. So system is determining this new warehouse process type which I have defined. so just like that in a real time in a real world when you are working on projects there will be different processes for which you have to design new specific warehouse process types with some certain control parameters and filters and values inside the wpt but you have to 
know how to create a process type and how this process type is determined in the system. So that's what I'm trying to explain and demonstrate is that how a WPT is created. First that what it is made of, what is the definition, what where it is used. Then how it is created in the system, how it is determined and how you can manipulate or maneuver or influence the determination you can play around with this. Then from here onwards it's like you are you are in charge of your own things that you will create, configure. You can define as many as you want but if you have clarity and understanding how it is done once you are able to do it achieve it once that is more than enough okay now I will try to proceed with this see now it is determining because of this entry taking place you can maintain several entries here depends on specific entries which you have maintained and your parameters in material master this indicator to be maintained in material master then it determines the specific WPT system has two options either 1010 or AS10 but system has determined AS10 because this is more specific with the help of indicator if I remove the indicator from product master system will again back to determining 1010 Yes, right. Uh, yeah, this A1 is a standard indicator or you have uh, created this I one? Have, I have created this. You can give any name, but it is two character indicator, two, two alphanumeric or two numbers. Okay, but you have directly ping uh, maintained in that uh, the screen, correct? No, no, no. You no, have not? I have not. Means before this, I'll come back one step. Yeah, um, I created a warehouse process type, then I created an indicator, and then I came to this third place for determination. Okay, but uh, I have seen you directly type A1, and the system oh, is not yes. telling that well, it was not created or created like that. That is why I am okay, asking. Okay, okay, yeah, no problem. Yeah, because I did not copy anything, I think that's uh, not your thing. Yeah, but there was okay. nothing to copy for that. Copy generally, I will use where there is a control. So okay, to save okay. time for me and to avoid mistakes or uh, uh, errors. So I yeah, like that. Yes. Yeah, like that. You have typed AS10 directly, just replacing uh, 1010. Correct. Yeah. So, but yes. that that AS10 zero is uh, already available. A which one? Uh, AS10 uh, because yes. you have copied 1010 and okay. you just replaced okay, okay. 1010 by AS10. So yes, it's already means, available. Yes, yes. That means when I come to this third step, which is determine warehouse process type, I can mm -hmm. only maintain the values here which are already defined in the system somewhere. Ah, okay, okay, so okay, okay, okay. Available. okay. Okay, that okay, okay. Now I understand. Sequence. You need to follow the sequence. First okay. is define warehouse process type. Second okay. is define control indicator to determine warehouse process type. Third is okay. determine warehouse process type where you will put all these things together. So okay. it is okay. step by step process. Always okay. go step by step. Will be long and easy. Yeah. Okay. So uh, is it available in the your uh, manual uh, like that? Uh, the study material. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. System is slowing now. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so you, now, uh, yes. Yeah. You said that warehouse process type is similar to movement type, right? Yes. So, so uh, like movement type, is there any standard warehouse process type in the system, or always we have to create an uh, our no, own? No, no, we don't have to create. We can, means I can run the whole training without creating new warehouse process type. Because there are already standard warehouse process types available in the system. Okay, okay. Okay, so I can run. There okay. are standard, like 1010 was the standard warehouse process type for inbound okay. delivery, for okay, inbound okay. process. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, there are, uh, mm -hmm. one second. Define warehouse process type. See, all these, doesn't okay. matter, it's our okay. warehouse. These are all standard one. Standard one, right. Okay. okay based on different numbering you will get to uh, get used to these numbers and all that mm -hmm. but movement type is three character code and mm -hmm. warehouse process type is a four character mm -hmm. code 
yeah. it can be numeric alphanumeric or anything right? so you see there is a, something standard for like scrap for return for transfer for uh, warehouse supervision there are different standard warehouse process types which are available and we will use standard one to copy and create the new one according to okay. our requirement mm -hmm. okay? okay for okay. me to run the training it's easy it's a lot easy and lot of uh, uh, it save a lot of time i can mm -hmm. run the whole training on standard okay. okay warehouse process type document type and everything mm -hmm. but in that case I will not show you or you will not be able to learn how this right. is created because in real world you will have a requirement to create a new one. Mm -hmm. Right. 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 How see if you have money, of course we all know how to spend it. Mm -hmm. But just showing through the standard, it is like how to spend money. But I mm -hmm. also need to teach you how to make money, how to earn money. Right. Right, so right. that's what we are learning when we are doing this uh, custom creation of uh, everything. We will create our own things and we will make sure and ensure and force system to work the way we want. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then now one more thing is now I will process, uh, means I will proceed or process this delivery and I will face error. Okay. What error I will face? Let me show you first goods receipt i have posted goods receipt and of course stock will be updated in ewm monitor as well as on the uh, s4 hana uh, mmbe side and it will be updated in rod storage location okay i will not show you that because that but when initially you are doing this exercise you need to check stock in both of the systems with every activity that you are performing. For example, when you post goods receipt, go to monitor, check the stock. Also open one more screen, go to MMBE, check the stock. Now I'll proceed, create warehouse task. Okay, and I will get error and error will be related to strategy. I'll say create and save, system say error. Okay, it says the storage type. Okay, now you will be wondering, yesterday we fixed this error, how come it is coming today? Right, yesterday we created new storage types and all that, then we modify this strategy also and we were able to do put away into our storage type. Now, system is not able to do this because... This process always, type was different. Yes, always remember, always, whenever you create a new warehouse process type, Whenever you create a new warehouse process type, make sure you connect it with your strategies. That means you create a new warehouse process type. If it is related to inbound process, go to goods receipt, strategies, storage type search sequence, and specify storage type search sequence for put away. This one, this entry. You need to go to this table and here also now find the relevant entry. ASP1, find 1010, okay, yesterday which one we did is, yeah, these are the one, okay, PI2X my indicator is assigned to product master, PI2Y also, like PI2X yeah. is assigned, right, so, yeah. copy this, and change the warehouse process type, means it, you cannot change if it is not created. It's of course, it's already available in our list AS10. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So now AS10 will work for both of these storage types for both of these strategies. All rest, everything remains same. Only I'm just updating new warehouse process type. Every day based on different scenarios, we will create new warehouse process type and we will come every day in this control table to include our process type, which will help us to map it with our strategy. So then system will be able to create the warehouse task and find bin. Okay. I have, I have uh, the storage type search sequence is SS2X. So that is a standard one or we have- No, we, I have created it. I have created it. See okay. all these uh, I have created yesterday and the naming convention if you say storage types or sequence 
like that's why I have kept SS2X. It is my uh, my way or it's my naming convention. That's how I do. In standard, there is no such thing. There are simple numbers in standard. Okay. Like 0020 is search sequence. Mm -hmm. 0020 is your storage type. 0020 is your activity area. This, ha this is how everything is mapped in standard. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, but when okay. I do something, I will uh, keep it according to the name. Like if you are saying storage type search sequence, it is okay. SS20. If you are talking about put away control indicator for the same storage type, I, it will be PI, put away indicator 20. And if you are talking about storage type, it is 002X or 0020. So this is how I will map with the help of. Uh, so then. Um, Okay, and so based on this storage type search sequence, the storage type and the bin will be determined, right? Yes, correct. Okay. Yeah. See, if I click on create now, see now system is able to give me a green light. And if I scroll down here, it is determining this bin. Okay, now there are two things. I'll switch to form view. See here. System is determining this goods receiving GR zone bin because that's where we have received the stock and that is maintained in our warehouse process type AS10. This is coming from there. So that means half information is already available in the warehouse process type means from where materials to be moved. It is to be moved from GR zone and where it should be moved that is the destination in the destination it is always based on our strategy and strategy uh, is determining this bin okay because of the storage type it has addition to existing stock it is determining same bin which we determined yesterday 11a there is enough space in that until it is full it will keep adding the same stock or same material into this uh, bin once we process with a different material, then it will propose a different bin. Different material, different batch, different SLED, then it will propose a different bin. Okay, so our uh, error was regarding the destination bin search. Yes, it was not able to determine the destination bin and it was because of the search sequence or the strategy connection missing because of new warehouse process type we created. Okay, yeah, okay. Okay, so that means if I use standard warehouse process type as we did yesterday, I will not face this issue and I will not show it to you and you will not learn it. Okay, so you also don't do everything. First, go through the sequence, face the error, then fix the error. F when you face the error, just think about it for one second, two seconds, why I'm getting this error. Then fix it. If you do it that way, you will always remember it. But if you just listen to the recording which we are doing now in the session and go through that recording and you will do that accordingly and not trying to understand, then you will forget it. So it's up to you how you want to do it. But I'll try my best to do it in the best way so that it makes sense and you understand and remember it. Okay, so I will create and save the task. Okay, warehouse order is created, warehouse task also is created and I will confirm it. Okay, so if, if for example, I can have five different warehouse tasks here, which are assigned to one warehouse order itself. Okay, if I confirm from the header, all tasks will be confirmed. Otherwise, I can confirm one by one task and status of the warehouse order will remain or change as partially confirmed until every task is confirmed. Okay, let me do that again in the next scenario quickly. I will have same material as two line items in our delivery. But yeah, for that I need to add into purchase order. That's okay, ME22N. Six, two, six, nine. Same material, 1000, ASP1, ROD1. Uh, 
okay then go to vl 31 n give next number in asn without asn also you can create but i'm just so that you get the holistic view that's why i'm using this okay this one 10 and this one is 11 okay now i have two i just imagine that there are two different line items i'll save it 3188 i'll go to prdi okay now i have two different line items so depends on how many line items you have system will generally create that many warehouse tasks okay so i'll click on post goods receipt and then i'll go to create warehouse task see now there are two items select both click on create and save okay now system is saying two warehouse tasks created when i go to confirm see now still system has created one warehouse order but two warehouse task this is what i wanted to show you so that you have clarity and understanding okay so now look at this status okay this status and this status always select this and select one warehouse task and confirm one warehouse task okay save it okay one warehouse task is confirmed other is open so the warehouse order is in process okay so it's in process status change and when i confirm the other one also so it will be completed confirmed confirmed everything is confirmed so there can be 100 warehouse tasks but can be assigned into or grouped together into one warehouse order because there are certain rules by default see here this rule def is used default rule is used if multiple line items of the same delivery which belongs to one particular activity area system will group them together okay because logically if you think if these two warehouse tasks having two warehouse orders that means you are assigning it to either to two different resources one by one or you are assigning two different warehouse orders to same resource again and again one by one but if you have a mechanism which will help you to group warehouse tasks together into warehouse orders to optimize your operations in the warehouse so based on those rules system is grouping the system is saying okay man this material is to going into the same activity area same bin why you are assigning it to two different people assign it to one person only so he can go and take both items together and again and again travel time is saved right so that's one reason one example of optimization of your warehouse operations with the help of warehouse order creation rule clear yes sir. are these rules are standard or it is again this, uh, this is the current no yes these are configurable currently what rule is working that is standard okay currently the rule that is taking place it is standard and later on we will configure our own rule and then based on those rules we will say to system that okay assign maximum 10 warehouse task into one warehouse order or assign maximum five warehouse task into one warehouse order if there are six warehouse task then system will create two warehouse order one grouped with five task and other grouped with or uh, other is for another warehouse task we can have number of warehouse task number of weight volume size etc there are so many control parameters which we can use to set up our rule and then system will work accordingly okay any more question uh, anup can you share the t code list if you have it yes 
I can share it, but it's not required. You don't need to remember or need not to know the T codes. Okay. Simple. Okay. It's don't, because that is an extra headache or extra pressure on you that you will think, oh, in, in means apart from doing all these practical exercises, configuration, setup, reading theory, going through this video, I also have to remember the T codes, which are so lengthy T codes, right? So don't worry about T codes. Okay, I can promise you and assure you that you will remember these T codes once you start using it. 99% of the T codes starts with SCWM. Okay, related to EWM, all transaction codes starts with SCWM. Then there, then depends what you're doing. If you're talking about delivery, it's PRD. If it is inbound delivery, PRDI. If it is outbound, PRDO. Okay. If you are talking about BIN, it is same, SCWM, LS01, LS02, LS03, and LS10 for the bulk, means the, the hundreds or thousands of BIN creation uh, based on the structure. Okay, stock upload, ISU, initial stock upload. Monitor, MON. TO confirm for warehouse task confirmation. Okay, the T codes are just like that only. It's it's very simple. Okay. Okay, but I can share. There there are there is a huge list. It's okay if you want to have. It's okay. I can share. I don't mind. But don't focus remembering T codes right now on that. Okay. You will see it every day when you go to let's say now we started going to PRDI and monitor. So you will go to those transactions and you will remember it. It will automatically come in your mind. Okay. Okay. okay, see all of these transactions starting with SCWM. Then depends what you are doing. Deconsolidation, it's decon. Quality inspection, it's QINSP. RFUI for mobile devices. Packing, it is pack. VAS execution, it's VAS execution. Picking cancel, it's can pick. Depends on what you're doing. Same word, you can make out your transaction code with followed by okay. SCWM. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Anup, yes. like ECC, uh, we don't have any automatic transfer order uh, confirmation because every time you are uh, uh, we have, selecting we the task. Okay, yes, okay. I'm do currently, I'm doing it because okay. we are starting with uh, very simple scenarios and simple uh, based on. Uh, I mean, slowly we will move on that. Yes, we can okay, have okay. automatic warehouse uh, task confirmation based on the PPF. Because when we are going for any new features, it should be more add on uh, yes, than the it is, it is previous new. one, correct? It okay, is okay. And in our warehouse process type, yeah. you can create your warehouse process type. Once warehouse tasks are created, those are automatically confirmed. Okay. Let okay. me show you that field quickly. Confirm immediately this checkbox. Okay. 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 So okay. if you check this, when warehouse mm. task is created, it will automatically confirm right away. Okay. Uh, and, and you say, and the, you have told that uh, uh, the warehouse task is nothing but the transfer order, correct? Yes. And again, you are telling about one warehouse order. Yes. One was warehouse activity and another was warehouse order. Warehouse activity is nothing but the transfer order. And what about the warehouse order? What warehouse, is that? One? Warehouse order is adding additional information to your transfer order or warehouse task or activity the okay. transfer order or the warehouse task is about which material to be moved what quantity from where to where okay okay uh, but already the to is having all the information TO, correct except to, to in wm is having that information but in either ah, yeah. this information is into two different names or two different documents transfer order and warehouse task Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, and the reason they have two different documents for that is because in EWM there is a lot of there are a lot of additional things which you can do which are not okay. available in WM. So Okay, okay. Having two different documents and having so many different control parameters and this will help you to optimize your picking and put away activities and that you will learn during the uh, uh, training. Okay. 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 Thank you. Yes. Any other question? Uh, yeah. I'm just a short uh, question. Uh, in warehouse, we mentioned that uh, 
it, uh, apart from warehouse task, uh, we also have the labor or the resource details. So yes. is it possible to see that uh, where, uh, where it is, uh, where we can see that who is the person, who is the picker, who yes. is the... Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. See, it is, it is definitely, it is there at warehouse order level, but currently in this first scenario or session that we tested, we mm -hmm. are not setting up the system for the resource determination and queue determination, which will come later. But fields, okay, okay. as a field, it is there. When okay. you test or do something, uh, because right now I just logged out from the system. No, it's so field, no. field is there. Okay. okay. Later on, we will yeah. do configuration according to our requirements, according to our scenario. And then we will ensure that system is determining that resource in warehouse order and it is determining the relevant queue that will come when we start working or uh, setting up our mobile devices and uh, rf frame yeah that time we, these things will come into the picture for work assignment okay yeah thanks okay okay guys then we, i'm done with this and then please uh, i request all of you to have system and practice first that try to create your own storage type later on during the weekend because you will have additional two days but right now currently make sure you run this inbound process which i have done today and try to create a new warehouse process type try to create new indicator determine your warehouse process type and then run inbound process make sure your wpt is getting determined and connecting it with strategy and you are able to do put away into any of bin which i have created then during the weekend when you have additional time you can create new storage type storage sections you can create it today also i'm not stopping you i'm just saying that because of that do not miss today's uh, practical make sure you are up to date with today's exercise and then what we did yesterday you catch up with that on weekend or you can do it during the day if you have time tomorrow. Okay?